Greetings everyone from Cousin It and hi from myself. We have ourselves a little bit of a situation here today. Cousin It is not too happy that I have not shown him at his best angle, but we seem to disagree on that because this is his best angle when it comes to the bloom count that you can see from another angle as opposed to the yellowing leaves. It's typical, it's the time of year. Nature just so happens to have the right idea that as temperatures warm up, yay, or in preparation of warming up, they start to shed things, including animals. Animals shed fur. Cousin It here is starting to shed some of the older leaves that he will not be needing. I keep trying to tell him that he will not be needing them because he will be needing that extra space for new growths, after which he will take on a Rod Stewart kind of appearance. <laughs> right now he is growing out his beard to compensate for the fact that he is losing some leaves. Needless to say, it's all very, very charming, even though he disagrees with me. And I've made a promise to him that when we say goodbye, I will show him from a more green and favorable angle. You see, the opening always for Blooms for You should be about you, the people that watch my video, supporting me with your view, with your likes. And I want to use every opportunity that I can to showcase Cousin It because of the hundreds and hundreds of Blooms that he has to say thank you to everybody that watches my videos and supports me and to everybody that is not mentioned in the Blooms for You episode today. And for that reason, Cousin It is not only sometimes my sidekick throughout the year when he's not in bloom, but features a lot while he is in bloom because the bloom count is important. I feel as though I am covering everybody equally, so to speak. So Cousin It blooms for you for your support on my channel if you are not named here today. And speaking of names, I've got some beauties out there. So let's go have a look. My Lelia Harpophila is giving me a lot of joy, I cannot tell you. So I'm hoping that the dedication of my Harpophila to say thank you to Shane Hickey, Danielle Gilan and Ugo Caporossi will give you just as much joy because I would like to dedicate these three blooms, one each to the three of you, Shane Hickey, Danielle Gilan and Ugo Caporossi to say thank you so much to you for supporting me here on my channel. I really appreciate the interaction that we have. So I'm going to be interspersing very many little extra pictures because the color as you see it on the screen as such is not true to what I see with my naked eye. And this orchid has an orange that has to be seen in the real context. The orange on the screen resembles more a Procatabola golden peacock, but that's not the orange of the Harpophila. The true color has such a richness about it. And sometimes in the evening, it almost feels like it's a neon it glows in the late afternoon, early evening. It's incredible. And then this little curly lip. How incredible is nature with a little lacy appearance to it? And then it has that little white stripings and markings. I just love this bloom. Meanwhile, I love the whole orchid. So the orange in the images is the true orange. You can see what the white facade behind me does on a cloudy day. Imagine what the white facade reflects in light on a sunny day. So I can have orchids in bright shade because of my white facade doing all the work for me. Not that this one needs it at this point in time, but you can see what happens to the blooms as I move closer and block the light. Isn't that incredible? Now we have a very good match to what was in the images. Playing with light here. I'm <laughs> getting totally distracted. <laughs> oh, but she's gorgeous. I also just love the growing habit of this orchid. Also called the sickle orchid for reasons. I wouldn't expect this to be a rapiculous lelia if I was wandering around the mountains in Brazil. You would have me completely fooled. But knowing what she looks like now, if I were ever to go there, I would know what to look for. She's special to me very, very special to me. And I hope that I keep the blooms as long as they can last, bar any mistakes on my part. So thank you, Shane Hickey, Daniel Gilan, merci, Hugo Caporossi, grazie mille for your support here on my channel, my Lelia Harpophila. She blooms for you.
Trust me, there's only a slight breeze going today. <laughs> it is very difficult to contain this spike now of my Sologeny Lime Bay. This is the 12th bloom, and this 12th bloom goes to Sylvia Beneke. This spike has now been going for over a year. There is no fragrance at this time of year. You can see the 13th bloom is already starting to take shape. And once again, the challenge is on how long can I keep this going? Because if I try not to shake too much, let's go up. <laughs> Look at that. Amazing, huh? That's the pot and the growth where this spike is coming from. And in about 14 months, this is what it's done. I am very glad to get a 12th bloom, but I would like to say thank you to Sylvia Veneke for your support on my channel via my Sologeny Lime Bay bloom number 12. She is extremely difficult to isolate at this point in time. So the presentation is all a little bit primitive. You have the stand in the back there. It doesn't look very elegant, but the bloom itself is still remarkable for number 12 considering the time of year she has also picked up in size a little bit compared to bloom number 11 which was a little bit smaller than this one but she has been open now approximately four days so we'll see how long it will last anyway Sologeny Lime Bay back for a stint Thank you so very, very much, Sylvia Veneke, for your support here on my channel. I hope that you like yourself some Lime Bay, and I really hope you're doing well in your part of the world. Sharon Gregoire, Seacoast Flash, ACAC. I am going to do something a little bit different so that I can say thank you to you for your support on my channel properly using the next three clusters of blooms that have opened up on my Prostechia Garciana Alba because if I'm going to point down like this, try to get into the blooms properly, we'll just be wasting time. This orchid is beautiful as a whole to look at. To get into the blooms, it's a little bit more difficult, but I can assure you that the next three clusters, they bloom for you as a thank you very, very much for your support on my channel. I was going around my daily thing with this orchid because if one orchid has aphids that needs daily attention and a cleanup, this orchid here requires a lot of attention and cleanup on the daily as well. Because hello, mealybugs. Now mealybugs need to eat too, I get it, but they don't need to eat on my orchids. They can enjoy the great outdoors. So I go around every day on this one to inspect if there's any new ones, if any crawlers were missed yesterday. And I cut away little sheaths here and there just to make sure that these little blooms will bloom out with no interference from mealybugs or a pesky sheath that is a little bit too dry for the bloom to come out straight. So, busy little time for me with this orchid. I have a resident spider in here. Uh, he seems to be too lazy to be doing anything because I'm not seeing him working for his keep. I've got mealybugs and I've got a spider. That shouldn't be a great combination. Either you have a spider and no mealybugs or you have mealybugs and no spiders. But the two, this guy here, yeah, he's just living la vida and not doing his job. That's what I call free rent. Anyway, my Encyclia Garciana Alba, even on an overcast day, is giving me this beautiful, rich talcum powder perfume. That is because of how many blooms she has now. Imagine if it were a sunny day, I would be intoxicated but I love this fragrance. It is delightful, elegant. It's literally a perfume, which if you didn't know where it was coming from, would make you go and search out its source. It's that nice. And nice is a word I very, very rarely use, but if I used another word that was a little bit more dramatic, that would also take away from how this fragrance has this combination of being so delicate, but also really very obvious but not intense if that makes sense it's obvious and delicate so it is a nice perfume i don't know if that even makes sense but some fragrances will hit you in the face this one is in your face without hitting you i hope that makes sense anyway i love it and it is wonderful that i can actually get more blooms to open and still have more to come but these three new clusters go to sharon gregoire 
Seacoast Flash and ACAC. Your support on my channel is so very much appreciated. The second spike of my Tulumnia Red Devil is looking glorious. I absolutely love it. Now, what you're seeing here in the viewfinder, Renee's next chapter and Rose Quackenot, it looks more like a fuchsia red. It's not. Actually, it leans more towards the fuchsia pink. It's not. I don't know if I can do anything here. We're trying to, there we go. That center bloom is just about to show a depth of color that I can see. But if you have a beautiful wine, red wine, rich, deep, that allows a little bit of the light to go through it as it is decantered, that is the rich red of this Tulumia Red Devil. And as close as I can get it is when I do this with my hand. Also, you will see that this lip, when I move it, will show some yellow. That is not there to the real eye. The camera is just picking that up. Love this little Tolumnia. I love the rich redness. I know you can't see it. Even the image I took for at the end of the clip, it doesn't come out this rich red. Now, if I go lower and lower, maybe if I block out the light. Oh, it's frustrating. I'm sorry. But still, this spike is blooming for Renee's next chapter and Ross Quackenat to say thank you to the two of you very, very much for your support on my channel. I've taken a picture of this spike from behind because I also love seeing that little detail of the petals and sepals with the little white dots at the end. It's just cute. Tulumnias are so, so interesting. I mean, it's always nice to know the name of your orchid, but if you don't, oh, just, you know, the color, the variation. I just love Tulumnias, they're so cute. And it's like the love of these orchids just gets refreshed every year when they bloom again. It's almost like after 11 months of not seeing blooms and then they bloom, it's like, oh, it's you, hello, welcome back, or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, I go on and on with my orchids. And I get surprised by them. <laughs> so this little red devil really is very close to my heart and it gives me great pleasure to dedicate it to Renee's next chapter. And Rose Wackenart, thank you so very, very much for your support of my channel. I know I say this a lot, but this has got to be one of the most beautiful, beautiful color combinations an orchid bloom can provide. So spring-like, so summery, so light and cheerful. No fragrance to go along with it. But these two blooms I want to dedicate to Preston Norris and Red Rose 6865. And she is my Sergioara Yokosuka story. These two blooms I dedicate to the two of you, Preston Norris and Red Rose. 68.65. Love. I just love these blooms. Very, very happy that I got her to bloom out this year. I also have another bud in the back. So the first year that I actually have two leads on this orchid and I'm hoping that I will get back to being able to get three blooms per spike as I did back in 2021. I am greedy like that, but still, oh goodness me, these colors. The texture of these blooms, just amazing. Now this lip, when you touch it, you would think that it is out of a prank shop. It's like very waxy and feels really, really fake, which helps very much in the longevity of the blooms to about four weeks, if not five. This orchid is a cross between the Epicatlia Rene Marquez and Rothara Free Spirit. How they came with the name Sergio Ara, I have no idea. But that's not here nor there with blooms like this. Names are just a side detail. I love how she's not an unruly orchid. She's also not that big either. So she doesn't take up much space and with a little bit of light training, the growths will actually stay contained within the parameters of the pot. It is my absolute pleasure to say thank you so very, very much to Preston Norris and Red Rose 6865 for your support on my channel via these gorgeous blooms of my Sergio Ara Yokosuka story. I really hope that you like them as much as I do. Thank you both of you so much.
Not to be outdone by what we just saw, here is Volnara, TLDC Fan Thursday, which is a cross between the Epicat Lea Rene Marquez and the Rincolalia Digbiana. So you can see the Epi Cat Lea Rene Marquez is very, very evident here. Again, similar colors, similar style blooms, a little bit more star shape. But via these three blooms, I would like to say thank you to Attilio Cretea, One Popcorn, and Claudia Paixao for Orchidias. Once again, the beautiful spring colors, but there's a little bit of a difference, as you can see, based on the shape of the bloom in comparison to the previous one. And the lip is also that much more frilly. That comes from the Digbiana parent, but it is just as waxy, if not even more so. Tough, tough lip. Also, not fragrant, but when it comes to blooms like this, <laughs> I find that fragrance can be secondary. It does surprise me a little bit with the Digbiana as a parent that there's not even a whiff, a hint of anything at all. But hey, there isn't. And I've had this orchid now almost four years, so it's not like, well, first time bloomer, no fragrance. No, this orchid has never been fragrant for me. It is also maturing into something that is a little bit more substantial than what we saw earlier with a Sergio Juara, slightly taller. But once again, if there is a little bit of light training involved, then the growths will stay nicely contained within the parameters of the pot. And you can see that it's not even supported to get it to stay in the pot upright and independent. So Atilio Cretea won popcorn, Claudia Paixao por Orchidias. Here is my Volnara TLDC Fan Thursday, and these blooms are for you. Thank you very much, grazie mille, and obrigado to the three of you for supporting me on my channel. It is very, very much appreciated. I really hope you're into spring, summery, light, fresh colored blooms. And here we are by popular demand of one, cousin it. We're gonna say goodbye from this angle and he appreciates it a lot more, but I think you see where I was coming from at the beginning. We don't have as many blooms on this side because it is more exposed to the shade. Light plays a big factor for cousin it as to where he's going to bloom. But this side, he keeps telling me he doesn't look so jaundiced. I'm like, okay, 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 optics, optics, I know. Needless to say, I'm happy now that he's happy. We both got our way. And for that reason, leaving everything on a good note with Cousin It, who is very... What did you say? I could have pulled that old leaf. Let me tell you something, Cousin It. If I pull that leaf off prematurely, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt, just like if you pull a hair out of the scalp of my head by the root. It hurts. So no, I am not pulling that leaf off prematurely. You're welcome. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. Really appreciate your time, your support. Make sure that you have yourself a beautiful day. I do attach a condition to that though, that you stay safe because it would be really nice to see you in the next video. Take care, bye.